Treat your dreams like your main chick and everything else like your side piece. Don't let anything make decisions for the main chick, your job. You got to work. You got to work hard. But listen, if if you have those opportunities to, to progress as an actor, take them. I'm not saying don't crash out. Don't jump out the window and quit your job. I'm saying make sure you make your dream, your goal as a priority. Welcome to Inside the Audition, the podcast where we go behind the scenes for a deep dive look into the world of auditions. I'm Joe Lars Larson, creator of Actors Audition Club, an international community helping actors book your dream roles in TV, film, and theater. And I'm Brandon Knox, actor, producer, and co-host. Each episode, we chat with actors and industry professionals to share their audition experiences, insights, and advice. We provide actors with actionable tips, strategies, and resources to help you elevate your auditions. We demystify the often intimidating and misunderstood world of auditions to help you succeed. So whether you're just starting out on your acting journey or you're a seasoned pro, join our Actors Audition Club members as we go Inside the Audition. Hey actors, do you want to nail your next audition? Download our free audition success checklist from Actors Audition Club. This checklist is packed with everything you need to be fully prepared focused, and confident. Whether you're new to auditions or you're a seasoned pro, this checklist is your ultimate guide to owning your auditions and making an unforgettable impression with a standout self-tape. Do not leave success to chance. Get your free audition success checklist today at actorsauditionclub.com slash checklist. Once again, that's actorsauditionclub.com slash checklist and take control of your audition journey today. Hey, it's me, Joey Freddie Larson, and today we've got a very special episode in a series of episodes featuring some of the cast and crew from a new horror anthology series called Tales from the Void. I was lucky enough to be cast in a lead role in one of the episodes on Tales from the Void, so I thought, why not have some chats with some of the cast and crew, creators... Uh, You can watch Tales from the Void on Screenbox in the U.S. That's the streaming site Screenbox. In Canada, you can watch it on Amazon Prime and also on Super Channel. It is a horror thriller anthology series. Super cool in the realm of Black Mirror, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. All of the stories are based on the Reddit subthread No Sleep, which features some real creepy pasta type stories. Again, if you're a fan of No Sleep, you're going to love this show. Uh, so enjoy today's episode featuring one of the cast and crew from Tales from the Void. My episode is the premiere episode called Into the Unknown. I know you're going to love it. Check out Tales from the Void on Screenbox or Amazon Prime Super Channel. Here comes the episode. Here we are. I'm here with Sean O.G. Sims. This is the third time we've hung out. Uh, we've, yeah. We're about to do a podcast episode. Uh, then the previous time that we've hung out, we crushed a bunch of burgers and hot dogs and yeah, sliders and all types sliders. of sliders. Yeah. And the other time was we spent a week in the magical world of Sault Ste. Marie shooting the premiere episode of a TV series called Tales from the Void, and our uh, our episode was Into the Unknown. So uh, I'm excited for our third hang. We're going to talk about the week that we met. We're going to talk about auditions. And uh, sadly, we have no sliders. Not today. Sorry, buddy. But feel free to eat. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it real loose. Uh, so just so you know, I record an intro afterwards. Uh, so we don't need to go through the whole rigmarole of uh, a big introduction. However, one of the things I love about your story is that you, like me, wasn't a person who started out as an actor from a kid and always knew they wanted yeah. to be an actor. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I know you were on a, the uh, the podcast Second Act, uh, Second Act, Act Second yeah. Act Actors uh, yeah, with so. uh, Janet, mm-hmm. our mutual friend. So. Tell us a little bit about your backstory um, because that's so inspiring to me because it means that you were going down one path in your life and you had to have the courage 
and put away the fear of like, oh my God, I'm going to do this crazy thing that everyone thinks is impossible. So tell us yeah. about your, your origin story. Um, I guess, uh, to start off, it was, uh, I always, so when I was in high school and stuff, I, I wanted to, well, I didn't want to play football. Like my coach saw me and was like, why don't you, why didn't you try out? And I was like, oh, well, you know, I didn't think I was making, he's like, you're on the team. So I on the team and like, I'm getting my ass kicked by everybody. And then, uh, <laughs> it wasn't until like, um, probably like a year or so later, you know, training with this other coach and all this stuff, I started getting better. And, um, I always wanted to be an actor. I, but, uh, you know, I was like, I'm such a big guy. I'm like, you know, six, mm. six, five, and I'm this, and they want, you know, this, and they, like, you always have that stuff in your head. And, um, it wasn't until like, um, you know, like went into university, uh, played at York and then I got, uh, drafted to, uh, the Argonauts got cut, went overseas, played in France doing like mercenary work, you know, just, you know, whoever paid me, whichever team, which was fun. That's great. I had to come back. Um, my mom was, uh, like had cancer and the cancer came back. And as I came back, uh, like two weeks later on her birthday, she passes away. Oh, wow. And then it was like, okay, what am I going to do? So I started working at the hospital where my mom used to, uh, take dialysis and, um, and passed away. And, uh, so I was working there for like years, you know, and, uh, you know, just paying off my tuition and doing a lot of overtime and I didn't have a lot of family. So it was like always working all the time. Right. And, uh, I started dating somebody as a nurse at the hospital and we were really working at, uh, working on like, you know, getting outside of our boxes, you know what I mean? It's like, I was really good at, you know, doing security and whatnot. And she was a really good nurse, but you know, we stayed in our lane. Right. And it was like, we were really focusing on, uh, getting outside of our lane. So one day she's like, what do you really want to do? And I'm like, well, I always wanted to be an actor, but you know, I never thought she's like, let's find you a school. Right. Wow. Her school, you know, I, I didn't like it that much. It almost made me lose the love for, you know, yeah. The, yeah. for acting. Yeah, there's there's a few of those where. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You and leave with PTSD. Next... You're like, oh, am I supposed to hate this? Oh, because that was horrible. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and then like the next one was like my Miyagi-Do, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was training there for years. And uh, finally, I was like, you know undercover you know i had the big binder full of monologues and scenes and whatever and everybody at work was like what, the, you, what are you doing you what were are you still in the acting for? closet that's funny. yeah 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 that's funny because, yeah yeah because you know when you when you ask me when when you tell people like oh i'm an actor oh how much money did you make right oh what have i seen you in yeah what did you what have i seen you in you know right so i was training and then I lose my job and I was like, Oh shoot. What oh, am I what a blessing. Now? Oh. And this is like, this is like, uh, to, like October 19, 2020 lose my job. I'm like, what am I going to do? So mid, just, that's mid COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So COVID and it was already just happened. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, you got to shit or get off the pot. You've been training for how many years? So like three days later, I, uh, Book this uh, meeting with uh, this uh, agent, and uh, yeah, she signed me up. And like a week later, I booked my first like show. Fuck yeah! And it's just like yeah, it's like everything happens for a reason, and um, yeah. you know, it's crazy. It's crazy how everything worked out, and yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I'm getting like goosebumps. Those are my favorite <laughs> things in the world. Where you like took a leap, something bad happened, something that you yeah. couldn't label as bad happened, but. You spun it like maybe this is the universe. This is my opportunity. Yeah. Uh, shout out to your, that was your girlfriend. Um, mm. Shout out to her because a lot of times um, you say it to someone and you're like, oh, you're crazy. Or, well, how are you going to pay the bills? Like the fact that she said, first of all, that she asked you the question, hey, what do you really want to be doing? If, it, yes. if, you a, if you had a genie and wave a magic wand and you're living the life you want to live, what would it be? You have the courage to say it then yeah. she has the courage and support to not get her own fears. Like, well, 
if I encourage him and he, and he fails, then I'm dating some yeah. loser starving artist. Like yeah. she could have thought that and just instead, well, let's, let's, I've had girlfriends. Out. Like I was playing, uh, like I was, when I was thinking about uh, trying to get back in the CFL and this one girl was like, Oh, if you get back in the CFL, then we're done. It's like, what? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like, like we're done right now. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you yeah. for showing me your true and colors. Going and and she's she's like, I really want to get my masters and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, let let's let me help. Let me any way I can. And then it was like when it came to me, it was like, oh yeah, if you do that, we're done. It's wow. Like, crazy. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Did Jen. she ever say why? She was like, too many um, cheer too many cheerleaders. Yeah, that, yeah, I think that was mainly the reason why there's like right. too many girls and this and that. But right, yeah, too many concussions. Maybe that was it. She was no, she, no. I think I was, was thinking was more brain. like she was thinking <laughs> the girls and yeah, right. Yeah. Well, man, I love that, and I, I I didn't know that about you. I love hearing. I always love talking about people's uh, acting showbiz origin story, like how they got into. Yeah. And the crazy thing is everyone's got a different story, but there's similar themes like mm -hmm. the, 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 I, I had a 10 year career in financial services. I was selling, literally selling life insurance. And yeah. then I started doing stand up and uh, sketch comedy and improv. And that led to commercials and indie films and student films and got an agent and then TV film theater, keep doing all that stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was 31 when I, I was 31 when I did my first stand up set. Before that, I had done a couple dumb YouTube videos, but I was I was also a late bloomer like you. Yeah, yeah, but it's, everything happens for a reason. Like mm -hmm. people think, are you? Do you get this sometimes? Like your your friends see that you're you're you know getting some kind of success or monocles, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, uh, you got an agent, right? Yeah, why don't you hook me up? It's like, have you trained? No, I'm self taught. Right. But it's like if 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 Joey can do it. Right. I, I definitely yeah. can do it. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? They don't yeah, there's that misconception that yeah. it's just, it's only like, I'm a person. I have a face. I can say words. I yeah. Can, I can memorize lines. And yeah. then you realize there's, there's, it's a profession. It's a craft. Uh, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Well, it's like being a fighter, right? It's like, no, nobody's going to walk into the gym and be like, yeah, no, I can, I can do this. Right. You fight the top guy and you get right. knocked out and you know, yeah. They can think that, but then they get their head knocked. Yeah, off. And you get punched <laughs> in the mouth, and you realize, oh shoot, right. I better start training. Yeah, right. It's like that quote: "Everyone's got a everyone's got a plan until you get punched." Until you get in punched the in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also share um, a similar. We've uh, we to the to the dead moms club. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to your to your loss. I also lost my mom uh, through cancer as well too. Yeah. So that's uh, something that's tough to deal with, but also I'm sure played a part in you deciding like oh life is fragile life is short yeah if i'm if i'm not here forever what what do i really want to be doing yeah. um i don't know about your mom but my mom uh i was quite young so i had never gotten into this but i always had the feeling like she would support me in anything that i would choose she just mm -hmm. like she wanted her son to be happy so i know that um she'd be should be happy with all this stuff too but did yeah. that play a part in you i know that was around the transition time a little bit yeah you know what it, it was a, a really maturing time like when i when i went to france because i was like admittedly when i was younger like a mama's boy like because i was always taking <laughs> care of her and i was always you know what i mean it was just me and her right. and um yeah it's just uh you know my mom she had like kidney failure for like ever like 13 years right and then when she was finally about to get her kidney boom cancer right wow. so it was just like holy crap so you know she fought and she was a really strong person but like she was always she was always proud of me you know what i mean of what i was doing and whatnot and i gotta say like you know i have a lot of friends you know who were doing like you know different things and hustling and and all types of stuff and you know the 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 relationship with their parents were really rocky. And I just, you know, it's, it's a blessing to know that your mom passes away and she's proud of you, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine so, the haunting last words mm -hmm. or, or un things unsaid. You never got to yeah. talk to her. Yeah. 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 yeah that is for, for, I don't know, your, I can't speak to your experience, but my experience was 
as tragic as it is to see someone get sick and and eventually pass away there's a blessing in the time that you get to spend with them versus someone who drops dead of a heart attack or like i can't imagine yeah. a car accident where yeah. one day they're fine and then the next they're gone and you mm -hmm. never got to say goodbye and all that stuff like um i guess it's just it's i mean there's pros and cons to all of it i guess but yeah. that that was a blessing on on our side there's plenty mm -hmm. of deep conversations and goodbyes and still yeah. rocks you when it happens. Nothing really prepares you for the, Oh my God, they're gone now. Yeah. 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 But then, then you realize it's like, there's no safety net, you know, right. Like if, if something happens, you know, people who have their parents and whatnot, you know, they could, you know, lose everything, but they could still go home. Right. But then it's like, you don't have that. And you're like, Oh, you, you start getting cautious. But then, and then it kind of like takes you in like, okay, maybe I shouldn't take this chance anymore. Maybe I shouldn't. But then something happens and then you, when you lose enough, it's just like, you can't be afraid to leap. You know what I mean? Right. Like those trapeze artists, when, right. when the, the safety net's there, it's like, oh, okay, I could slip up. But when they take the safety net off, it's like, you know, everything has to be you know, precise and perfect. And, you know, it's just, you just work on it. Yeah. I love that. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that too, because my dad's getting up there too. And he has some health things. And I thought mm -hmm. of that. I lost my mom. She was young. She was 56 and I was young. I was only 23, I think. So yeah. different, different, like different feelings at the, uh, he's 82, but I've had that thought too, of like, when you lose both your parents, you, it can make you feel really untethered and be like, Oh, I'm like, it's all up to me now, which has also, it's probably similar to similar, but different when you have a first child where you're like, Oh, now I'm taking care. Of, I, I got to crush it because I'm taking care of another human being. And then when you lose a, both parents, you're like, I got to crush it because it's up to me. And there's no, there's no going back to mom to make me supper or to sleep on the couch or it's like, yeah. But yeah. I think, like, if anything, you know, I got—I think I, I got to meet your dad briefly when we yeah, were yeah. watching the tales. Yeah. But it's like, if anything did happen to your dad, I think you would know that your dad is so proud of you, and he's seen oh yeah successes. You know what right. I mean? And some and and you know, I there's a saying where it's like, you know, your parents' job is to build a strong boat. So right. that when you go out to sea, you're always able to come back and make it through, you know, the storms and stuff. And like, you know, I see you and what you're doing and it's like, you're there, you're that strong boat. You know what I mean? Right. So like if anything did Viking happen, boats. No, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, some people, they don't, they're not lucky to have their parents to do that. And they're yeah. like, their parents are drowning themselves by the time the kid comes along. So mm. Yeah, uh, blessing there. Well, look at this. We're, look at us. Two grown, <laughs> two grown men getting emotional, talking about parents, love, loss, dreams come true. Yeah. Um, I want to talk, obviously, about Tales from the Void. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just talk from your perspective how that project came about to, to be. You could talk about the audition process. This being inside the audition, we love hearing behind the scenes audition mm -hmm. stories. Uh, you can talk about how you generally prepare or specifics to uh, to this. And then we'll get into talking about the actual shoot week and how much fun that was. Hey, actors, are you ready to take charge of your acting career? Start tracking your audition progress with our free audition success tracker tool from Actors Audition Club. This incredible tool has been designed to help you log every audition, review what worked, and highlight your areas for improvement. Tracking your audition journey is a key to growing as an actor, and this incredible tracker tool makes it easy. Download your audition success tracker today at actorsauditionclub.com slash tracker. That's actorsauditionclub.com slash tracker, and start building your roadmap to audition success today. So, you know, it, it was like early, early in the year, you know, get this audition. I'm like, huh, okay. You know, and it's one of those ones where I find the ones that you really, really like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I got to prepare for this and blah, blah, blah. But the ones where you're just like natural and you're just like, okay, I, you know, you, you figured out how, you know, you want to play it and you just do it and you just forget about it. Those are the ones that, 
It's right. like a like a girl you like, you know what I mean? It's right. like the, the <laughs> girl you knew. like, you um um um, um <laughs> stuttering da 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 da. But when the girl that you don't even think is even interested in you, and you just do your thing, and you just they like you, you know? It's, right. That's what it is. And um, yeah, it was just you know, uh, it was a scene where you know I'm supposed to um hear the vibration of like the the square or whatever, and I'm supposed to turn around and. Uh, yeah, I did it a couple couple ways. I just honestly, I just read it over. I uh memorized my lines. But like my lines weren't like, you know, super complicated or whatever, but and then I just did it. And I just, you know, I did a couple takes. Uh usually my girlfriend uh she she helps me with my takes and stuff. Right. So uh Is this the shooting. same girlfriend from before? No, no, this is a different, different girlfriend. Relationship. Yeah. But well, look um, at you, all these helpful girlfriends. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have like yeah. some very amazing women who came yeah. into my life. It's but, like what they uh, say: behind every successful man is several yeah amazing girlfriends. <laughs> Absolutely. I, honestly, <laughs> if it wasn't for like some very strong women, I would be here where I yeah, am. Yeah, buddy, your mom like, included. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. But um, yeah. So didn't hear anything for like you know, like a month or two, I thought like nothing, you know, it was, it was over and done with. Right. Right. Same. And yeah. um, yeah. Then it's like, boom, you, you got congratulations. I'm like, congratulations for, Oh, and then I got the part. And then I tell my, uh, one of my best friends, Johnny, I'm like, yo, I got this part. He's like, Oh, I, I'm on the same show. So That's we got incredible. to shoot again. Yeah. Yeah. So that Johnny was Goche. Cool. Yeah. 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 Who, who will, uh, will do one of these with him as well too yeah um cool well i'm sure part of uh like that uh high school coach or the college coach that just saw you and was like you're playing football a bit of it was if they saw you they're like yeah that's the guy yeah uh, well, hopefully so to to let our our listeners know if i know i've been sharing it so you might have already seen this um but it's tales from the void the premiere episode is into the unknown which was directed by joe lynch Sean and I were both in it. You're going to meet uh, more of the cast as well. And um, hopefully we'll do an episode with uh, Joe Lynch, the director, and also Francesco, the creator and producer and one of the directors of the other series. Um, but um, I lost my train of thought. I was like, I got, oh, uh, I wanted to say where it is. So you can watch it in the States. You can watch it on Screenbox, streaming app called Screenbox. In Canada, it's on Super Channel, which I think you can also watch on Prime. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People have been finding it on Amazon Prime, and our episode is the the first episode. I think they give you a free week. I'm just Ooh, saying. Ooh, there I'm you go. Them. Yeah, yeah. Cool we're, we're gonna hook you in. Yeah, Super yeah. Channel. These podcasts might be responsible for millions and millions of uh, of subscription revenue for Amazon. Yeah, there you you're, you're welcome, Jeff Bezos. I don't, I don't. I feel like we got a buyout. We're probably not getting a cut of that money, but uh, yeah, go to Amazon Prime. Go to Screenbox. Uh, it's a six six episode first season of a horror thriller anthology. And the cool thing, the cool thing that I don't know about you, but when you got when you first saw it. They attached the lookbook and the specs and the like. The description of the project was quite deep. There was a really cool lookbook that showed like the vibe and the look and feel. Yeah. And then it talked about the fact that so they sourced all of these stories. I know you know all this, Sean. I'm not. If you're like, if you're like, why, why is he telling me what the show is? <laughs> I'm talking to our listeners right now, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, they sourced from the Reddit thread No Sleep, the or the sub thread No Sleep. There's this giant community, I think millions and millions of uh, readers, and it's first-person horror thriller stories told and written in the in from first person. So they're meant to sound like this is a real thing that happened to me. And our episode is based on a super viral story called The Black Square that then they adapted. Uh, I'm spaced in on the writer's name. Sorry to the writer, uh, but we'll we'll link it all up in the uh, in the show notes. And uh, and then so like Black Mirror, like Twilight Zone, like Outer Limits, each episode is a standalone thing, uh, but in the genre of thriller horror. Um, so let's talk about uh, the actual shoot of it, because um, for me, my experience was uh, 
we got it was on location for, which for me is always cool it feels like you're flying away to movie camp you get a little like paid vacation you get to feel like a rock star they arrange uh the the transport the the plane ticket i just got to show up which feels cool um and then i think we were on were we on the same flight all of us uh no no i was Did you on come a, later yeah yeah i was with okay. uh janet mcmorty okay right? okay so we got on the same plane together But then, uh, yeah, you guys, I think you and John were on a separate plane. Yeah. Yeah. John was on mine, and I believe Martin and Mpo were also on that one, too. Okay. But we didn't really know each other. So you yeah. just like, you got this, okay, exciting thing. Yeah. I'm going. And then you look around, and then, and then all of a sudden, we're waiting for the shuttle from the airport. And kind of oh, you look no. around, you're like, yeah. you have the vibe of a TV and movie star. Like you look, you you look at each other, and, yeah. and then all of a sudden we're in the back of a van on the way to the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk. Anything stand out from the shoot itself? Um, well, either I think onset, that was my offset. first. Uh, I think that was like my first, uh, like flying somewhere to do shoot something. So that was really cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, you know what honestly just like you know having a hotel going you know because like in the beginning you, you're doing a chitlin circuit you know what i mean you're doing you know tail um was it uh haunted this and uh yeah like non-union you know, docudrama yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it's just drive yeah. yourself there yeah wear your own wardrobe shut up and eat this <laughs> <laughs> don't here's your, here's yeah. your peanut butter sandwiches yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know awesome experiences too but uh yeah just you know doing it doing something like shooting something shooting something while you know taking a flight in a in another part of the country um with one of your best friends mm -hmm. and you know just it was it was An amazing experience you know everybody um uh, from the cast and crew everybody was cool everybody was welcoming you know i you know knock on wood i haven't really had like too crazy of a you know bad experience on set with anybody <laughs> so yeah it's just uh yeah it's, yeah it's amazing and yeah, just but... like the like when they built um and pose like apartment in the gymnasium right And just seeing how it's crazy. And yeah. then like, you know, the the facial scan and you know, doing all that stuff, the CGI yeah. was amazing. Yeah, the, the CGI AI scan of us yeah. to, to reproduce us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cast and crew top to bottom. Yeah. Uh huge shout out to Joe Lynch, too. He's such a great captain general yeah, cool, cheerleader like he's the perfect balance he's also a, a super like cinephile film nerd loves what he's doing uh always had like the pre-meetings like the pre-meeting huddle with everyone yeah. um i don't know about you how, but in my experience too is in the callbacks and then in the um he took some time before we were shooting to meet with me and go through my scenes and make sure i like he, he took really good care of us i guess is what mm -hmm. i would say he was yeah. a real actor's director i think that comes from the fact that he's also an actor himself and yeah. just loves the process like no part of it as grueling as that schedule was we were doing um like overnights and super late yeah. and just And and that's that's we, we're I feel like a lot of the time the actors we get the easiest schedule compared to directors and producers and um, uh, everyone working the crew working like crews got to show up early they're usually they're tearing down but um, yeah just a great experience top to bottom like we're a team we're all doing this yeah. and then where you're sad at the end uh, yeah 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 funny Joe Lynch story so like on my callback uh, he sat in. Right. He's on he's on uh, Zoom. And so he's like, yeah, Sean. So, you know, this story is about like you kind of get what the story is about. Like it's, uh, you know, this this cube and da, da, da. he starts explaining it. And I'm like um, that episode of Star Trek where that cube comes to the Enterprise. Yes. And he's like, sorry, <laughs> he's like, you're, you're my guy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you got, you know, you immediately got the reference. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, you know, That's, the fact that he understood that just it's so important for a lot of directors because for a lot of directors that is how they speak. They need like they they want to be like, oh, it's like that scene from this, or it's the tone of this. Yeah. 
or or it's as specific as you know that shot from blank movie mm -hmm. and so it becomes this like movie speak shorthand instead of having to get like technical or to explain the emotions or like any of that it's just like oh it's like this and you're like got it yeah. uh, i actually felt bad because he's like again i like i he's my he's the favorite director that i've worked with i'll say that like i would if, if he if he shined the symbol into the sky i'd be like where are you i'll come yeah. and i'll be in anything that you're shooting right now yeah. um but he dropped several references on me that i hadn't seen and so yeah. i'm like uh, I'm like, oh, I got to watch more movies because I could see like he's all cool with it, but I could see the disappointment in his eyes. Like, yeah. he'd be like oh, it's like this. Have you seen this? And yeah, I'm like, yeah. Oh, I don't like maybe I saw bits and pieces when I was a kid. Like uh, and he's like, uh, so uh, you ever watch like Star Trek, like the next generation or whatever? Have I? Yeah. Yeah. I watched more old school Star Trek. Oh, than, OK, because it's like this Trek episode. Then. There's this episode where like like Captain Picard is making first contact with this uh alien and they have to touch down on this planet and the the guy's speaking but Picard doesn't understand what he's talking about because he's talking about like stories like his whole culture is like based on like stories so he'll you know you'd be like um like a Trojan horse Troy right and mm -hmm. but if you don't know what the story is and it's like that's how directors kind of speak sometimes it's right. like you got to know the reference of the movie and da 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 so you could be like oh okay yeah i understand right oh shit. uh oh uh oh <laughs> yeah, yeah um the the so yeah it's a great lesson for actors it's like if you if you want to uh, one of my other coaches tom Todoroff, who i know you've worked with as well mm -hmm. yeah. he has said i've um one of his quotable quotes is if you want to be a part of TV and film history, you need to know it as well, or you need to study it. So uh, he recommended Criterion Channel, which is jacked full of collections of a, like iconic and award-winning films, and they put them into cool collections, like either a bunch from the director or a bunch from an actor or a bunch from a, a genre. And yeah, it does, it does really help um, when you're so being a football you're... coach, being a student of the game. You know, yeah. you got to watch tons and tons of uh, film, right? Right. Game film. And, uh, you know, luckily for me, like my mom used to work a lot. Like she used to work security at uh, the the airport. And, uh, you know, I'd just be by myself and I'd just be, you know, watching TV, watching right. this movie, watching that movie. So training, you were yeah. studying. That's right that's there. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, the great thing about that is I'm pretty sure, sure. I mean, talk to your accountant, but I believe like your, your movie tickets and your subscriptions and things like that as an actor, that's all, that's all training and education. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's, that's a write-off baby. Yep. Yeah. I don't know about the popcorn and the uh, Skittles, but uh, at least the ticket itself. Yeah. Um, what else can we talk about? You remember the, um, the last day, uh, like rap day, were you, were you on the plane home with us or did you go? The, yeah. the, the day we, we all went to the airport yeah you and john and, and bo you guys got on the same flight and then me and janet went because okay yeah so you, he was, the... you guys are like deeper downtown so you guys went to the, like, right. the Toronto island and i yeah went we went to the airport. island airport yes yeah. so you were there for the part that i wanted to talk about is so to me i i don't think i've ever had like a higher post rap high where i'm walking through an airport feeling like I'm a fucking rock star. Like yeah. it went so great. The week went so great. I think we all really felt good about what everyone did. Any yeah. scenes that weren't ours that we watched, I'm watching like Enraptured just being like, oh, that's going to be fucking dope. Mm -hmm. um, all Martin and Impose scenes when I, when I like Martin to me uh, has so much like gravitas and presence and grounding um Im impose amazing with all his stuff that he was doing too so there was just so much good stuff so i i remember leaving the leaving the hotel shout out to the hotel omelet bar as well mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> continental breakfast yeah i feel like the omelet maker when they look at you they look up at you and johnny uh and are like, <laughs> oh, we're gonna need more omelets yeah. we're gonna need more eggs i think we scared the the <laughs> the receptionist there's a few like workers at the hotel that we scared because like we we had to shoot an audition 
Yes. And, and like Johnny yeah. asked me to go to his room and shoot. And it was like a prison, like for a prison scene or whatever. And right. I'm like, you got to do it more and angry. And da -da 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 -da. So as soon as we open the door, it's like the manager is there and like yeah, with another man, worker. She's like, like, oh my God, thank God you guys are just... Oh, yeah. we thought we oh, had to we're just them. acting. Yeah. We're just playing. Yeah. <laughs> we're just play fighting. Yeah. And to, to our listeners and viewers, when you see the episode, Sean and Johnny are both huge. How tall are you? A lot of mental love. What are you? Hmm? How, how tall are you? Uh, six five. Six five. And Johnny is six five. Six yeah. five. I'm six three, like two fifty, which means very rare in my life am I ever the small guy. <laughs> but on on set, and there's that there's the great shot of. Um, the cinematography in the episode's amazing. There's so many. You don't really realize it when you're mm. um, when you're in front of the camera because you're not seeing it unless you're walking around a video village watching every shot. But there's yeah. so many of Martin's shots and and Joe Joe the director and Martin the cinematographer where I'm like, oh, this is framed so fucking perfect and beautifully. Like the shot of the three shot of me in the middle and then you and you and Johnny flanking me. And then mm -hmm. more of the neighbors behind, and you yeah, can see yeah. the flicker, the flicker of the lights in the apartment building behind. I saw that, uh, and I think it became like one of their posters. And I was just like, "Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like, yeah, that yeah. was fucking beautiful. Yeah." And but you guys are huge, so I'm like, I'm I'm around you. The idea, and you guys were sort of like, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, my henchmen, or or yeah. we were part of the same group, yeah. part of the same group. Um, yeah. I don't know if I hired you. I don't think I. Had <laughs> I doubt I had the money to pay for you. Um, but yeah, it's like uh, you guys are like, yeah, massive. So you'll you'll see. And that scene we could, I don't know, we, we don't want to spoiler alert too much, but there's a scene where you guys basically destroy a room uh, in like a, a searching for something. You're, you're in a rage looking for somebody. Uh, let's talk about that because I'm sure that must have been cathartic. That was one of the last things too. Was it the last night? Yeah. Like yeah, before, yeah. Before we wrap, Johnny, Sean, get in there and destroy this whole <laughs> fucking set. Like the it walls. They, yeah, they, you mentioned it. They had built, they had built, a lot of it was on a location. The, outs, the exteriors was on a location. And then the interiors were done in a, in a decommissioned high school's gymnasium, I think. And then they had built the sets in the mm -hmm. gymnasium. So share your experience of smashing down a door and wrecking a room. Wreck it. No, it was, wreck, it was wreck funny because, well. like, <laughs> Lidge was like, you know, explaining, he's like, Sean, yeah, we just we want you to smash this and just pick this up, maybe over here. And, just, and I just I tapped him on the shoulder. I'm like, I got this. Yeah. He's like, all right, go ahead. <laughs> and we just went in there yeah. and we just, like, I think I picked up, like, like a desk and I threw it into, like, um, like a lamp or whatever and everything's right. smashing up. Yeah. Because Jana was telling me, she's like, yeah, we were watching on the screen and like, you know, like the the crew, they were jumping back and we're like, oh, it's violent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It's an amazing experience, man. Just just that was like the first time on set where it was like I actually got to play. You know right. what I mean? Just have fun. You know, don't get to like in your head about something. Just just enjoy yourself and play and experiment right. and nobody Fully was judging. Yeah. yeah 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 was that a one taker did you ruin everything that was a one -taker. and we couldn't do it again yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> right. like we're not resetting because yeah it's that's why it was like they're, he's they're lucky young. they're lucky the whole walls of the room didn't just like collapse and we're all yeah. just standing there in a the gym yeah one thing you were talking about uh the airport and then yeah. you're talking about your high did you did you finish what you were saying or oh yeah we i'll come back to that um mm -hmm. Just, just the vibe of like that was so much fun. It felt like an episode of Entourage to me, mm. uh, where we got there. I also felt in retrospect because we're all so big and loud and um, what's the word charismatic. I think as well, like we're all theater kids at heart. So mm. <laughs> we were joking and and talking and reminiscing. It just yeah. felt like an episode of of Entourage to me. Where yeah, I'm, absolutely. And I'm sure because we're all huge uh, and. The nature of our conversations we probably stuck out a little bit mm -hmm. in a small regional airport at sault saint marie so i was afterwards i was like that must have just been a whirlwind 
of energy for that small little airport where everyone was like, oh, <laughs> who the fuck and friendships people? were made, you know, it's yeah. just like, there's yeah. so many times you're on set and, and it's just like, oh, bye, let's exchange Instagrams and you don't really hear from anybody again. Right. But like with us, it's like we always see each other, we meet up, we, you know, and it's just, so it's, it's really good. You know, there's times I've come to you for advice and it's like, what, you know, and, or like, what do you think about this and that? Right. And yeah, you've been completely accommodating to me and, you know, just warm and, you know, thanks. Appreciate yeah, buddy. It. Yeah. If not for, if not for making friends, what are we really doing? You know? Yeah, absolutely. If it's not, if it's not fun, you know, you can't, can't be friends with everyone and not, not, not every project is the greatest one ever, but yeah, uh, yeah that was like a dream, a dream gig. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that we got to get a sequel. Yeah. I hope so. Come on, Francesco. So. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, people can make sure to watch Tales from the Void, uh, the episodes Into the Unknown, based on the Reddit No Sleep thread story called The Black Square for my Reddit nerds uh, listening. Uh, did you, had you read the, the Black Square story before or did you no, in, no, did, just... have, have you read it since? Actors, are you ready to shoot your strongest monologue yet? Join our free monologue challenge. You'll learn to tackle monologues with expert guidance and professional insights. This is perfect for new actors and seasoned pros. The Monologue Challenge is designed to help you develop your confidence, polish your delivery, and elevate your acting and monologue skills. Do not miss this chance to push yourself to new heights. Sign up now at actorsauditionclub.com slash challenge. That's actorsauditionclub.com slash challenge. And get ready to shoot your strongest monologue yet so you can showcase your unique talent to agents, casting, and producers. Sign up now at actorsauditionclub.com slash challenge. Uh, no, I honestly, I, I didn't want to go in just like, you know, reading something because, you know, sometimes the stories are different from, you know, the the actual show and, you know, you don't want to be a snob like, well, this da 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 da. I just wanted right. to go in and then just enjoy it. And uh, Clean yeah. slate, fresh. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would be a great fun thing for you to go back and read it then because the story is great. It's definitely, there is differences. Um right. Uh, subtle things, but I think the adaptation that Francesco wrote and and what we shot was like mm -hmm. a, was a I'm sure the writer's super happy. So watch yeah. it on Screenbox, watch it on uh, Super Channel in Canada, and I believe all six episodes have dropped as well too. So people can watch uh, the other five after ours. Um, no sh no shade to anyone else, but I heard people say that they thought ours was the favorite. So mm -hmm. it, it was my favorite. I was I won't with. <laughs> Now, I might be biased, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> yeah, we're, def we're definitely biased, but yeah. uh, you know, you got to rep yourself, you know, if you mm -hmm. can't, if you can't rep yourself. Um, since this is uh, inside the audition, we like to talk a little bit more about uh, audition processes. Can you talk a little bit about like how you see, how you think about auditions and then your actual tangible setup? Like um, what, how, how do you, from the time you get an, an email from your agent to the time you shoot it, um, what's Sean's process? How do you shake it down? Okay, my process because I'm I'm you know I'm relatively new, right? You know I've been training for a few years, but like you know I didn't start going like professionally until 2020, end of 2020. So it's like ever changing, it's figuring out things, figuring out what's good for you. So um, I have like one of those industrial printers that print out like, you know, 1500 pages before, you know, you ever need to reset it or whatever. So, you know, I'll, I'll be on the couch. I'll be like, huh, okay. I got an audition Print it out. You know, I'll start okay. reading it. Um, I, uh, you know, like I'll read it a few times and then I'll start highlighting and then I'll start making notes on like, okay, this is, you know, um, like they're talking about this or, blah, blah, you know what I mean? Just like emphasizing that. Um, I've really uh, went to this like new school now and uh, I've learned some different techniques, which is really helping me right now. And uh, once after I read it, now I'm just like, okay, um, there's this part about like basically saying your lines monotone. 
So you're not putting any like, you know, inflection or like um, commas or whatever, completely monotone and saying that a few times. And I don't want to kind of like go super into the technique because it's just sure. like, I'm still learning it. I don't want right. to like fuck it up. Right. But uh, it's, it's really like, if I have a audition that's due on maybe Friday, I try and get it done on maybe Wednesday. Love it. Right. Yeah. So like, so if I got it on Monday, I try and yeah. do it on get Wednesday. Them in because, early. Get them because in early. Because getting them early, it's like, um, you know, let's say you're on, you know, like people who are dating, use dating apps, you know, in the beginning, when you, you turn it on, you're like looking through the profile, you're, you know, looking through the pictures, da, 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 da. After a while, it's like left, right, left, right, left, <laughs> right. And the slightest thing could, you know, right. So think about, you know, you getting your stuff in now, like early, and then they're like really taking time and looking at, oh, this person is good to compare to like an hour before it's due and you, you know, all these, you know, 50, 60 auditions are coming out and it's right. like, yeah. Right. Yeah. The slightest thing you could have made one mistake and it's like, forget it. No, we don't want this guy. We don't want this. Right. right. Yeah. I think get it, get him in early, like also shows you're professional. You can turn it around. Yeah. Yeah. They're not wondering like if we book him, is he going to show up a minute before his call time, you know, mm -hmm. or not at all. Uh, is he going to need a, like an extension? And I know there's different, different strokes for different folks and everyone's different, but I'm, I'm of the school of, of, I think the within reason, like you don't want to rush it so much that you don't fully explore it or, or uncover the, the, the layers or the beats of it, but, um, don't leave it to the last minute. I think a lot of people, yeah, don't, people don't procrastinate and then it's stress and anxiety and it yeah. feels like, ah, oh, and then you wonder why you didn't get it. It's like, well, you left it all to the last minute. It's like cramming in, in high school or university. It's like, you, mm -hmm. you, it might have worked, but it's probably not the most effective and useful way to way to do th things. Absolutely, yeah. and then it's like you know, being a like uh, you know, we were talking about students of the game and whatnot, and watching film. Like I have all of my auditions I've done since like Love twenty twenty to now, and you know, sometimes you got to look at it and see what you're doing wrong. Sometimes you got to, you know when when you're not really booking anything or things are slow you take those opportunities to like you know it's like building a 10 second car you know it's like do i really need this cd player do i really need this you know <laughs> you're trying to get your like any little thing to get you just a little bit faster the edge yeah, you know? yeah. so yeah just start you know like hey okay what you know where am i looking where are my eye lines you know why did you choose this make this decision you really gotta you know get an external hard drive and just save all of your auditions so you could just you could really look at it because sometimes you know you don't hear anything and you think oh well something's wrong maybe you know right. and you start thinking because this is this is this is not like a team sport where it's like oh we're winning and you can look at stats and all this stuff like you're 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 facing off against how many you don't know how many other people you know, it's not like right. you're being told and it's just like, okay, you got to figure out what could I, what am I possibly doing wrong or what, and, and maybe get some other people that to look at it is like, Hey, what do you think was wrong? You know, in the same field, you know, the, the, the important thing is like, especially in this, this, this world is like having friends that are, are doing the same thing. It's, it's like being a student athlete, you know, you chill with other student athletes and you get better. You know, you're right, trying right. to get better. So it's like have a, you know, have a lot of friends who are actors who can tell you the truth. Like, hey, this is it. You know, the, this you need to work on. That was good. Blah blah blah. You know, just to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Have a community of people and other film industry professionals. That's the absolutely. That's the one big thing, or it's it's one of many big things that we talk about at Actors Audition Club and on the podcast is doing it with if you're shooting with a spouse partner mother father grandmother any neighbor mm -hmm. anyone who's not a film industry and casting professional yeah you can get it done and it might work but you're probably like i would say 99 percent point nine percent missing something that someone who's a pro and has an eye might have had 
extra insight. Yeah. Like, well, what if you tried this? What if you tried that? Or, or whether it's something technical or just storytelling or camera dynamics or anything like that. It just, there's a reason that all of your favorite television shows and movies were shot with a professional crew, mostly using professional seasoned veteran actors. Like obviously there's fresh faces and there's people who you might call the naturals, but mm -hmm. generally it's professionals. So why, why would you think that you would have great success shooting an audition with someone who has is clueless to TV, film, acting, the craft of it, the casting process, all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, find, but, uh, but, find your people. You know, and understandably, it's like, you know, you don't start off with that. You know, right. it's like if you're going to, they, this is exactly like if you were being a boxer or taking MMA and whatever, it's like there are levels and, you know, you need to, you need to surround yourself around people who are, you know, getting better trying to get better trying to put in that extra work because you know i used to like every sunday i used to meet up with a lot of my um um classmates and we could you know come to my place and we go over monologues and and scenes and and all types of stuff and it was right. just slowly getting ourselves better and then you know when you when you get that opportunity to work with somebody professionally and and you know like to to actually help you shoot an audition like properly. It's just like, take that, take it, use it to your advantage and take notes on, you know, what, what you were missing. So yeah. you're constantly learning. And it's sometimes you're learning on your own because it's like, sometimes it, like people are giving up like trade secrets, you know, it's <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot of, yeah, you know, yeah. it could be well, a lot of gatekeeping, yeah. right? A, a lot of people are worried about their own and figuring it out on their own. So like, yeah, I, like I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. You go figure yeah. it out on your own. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the, the interesting thing about celebrating something that's being released is I always think of it like when you book it, there's a success of, Oh, I got, I just booked something. I got to go shoot it. And you, you're riding that high. And then there's that long delay of post-production. Now what? This is like an echo where we get to, and it's almost to me, it's like we get to celebrate the, a past version of ourselves. Like that we captured time in that little time capsule shooting in Sault Ste. Marie of that episode. And there it is. Now it's on a box or it's on a mantle for somebody to see, or these days on a streaming platform. But um it's already gone and it's the past. So, so it's great to celebrate it. But the question is what's next? What are you working on now? What do you aspire? I know you're, you're very, you seem very driven. So I'm sure you're creating your own things, but, uh, and this is the kind of podcast where we speak things into reality and we manifest them. So mm -hmm. what do you want to put out to the world that you're working on and, and what do you want to share with us? Um, I guess my like next big project would be, uh, this uh, movie called adulthood it's with uh josh gad and billy lord and alex Hi. winter so yeah this was like my first like you know like working with like you know really big named actors and right, whatnot right. and it almost felt like you know you're 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 uh you're like robin or or kid flash or something and it's like you got called up to go to the justice league you know right. it's like you're yeah, all yeah. just like oh shoot you know it was, a, it was really cool because like you know everybody was like really welcoming and nice and you know really you know surprisingly like really down to earth people so i'm really excited about that that's uh it's in post-production it should be coming out early next year hopefully congrats um, adulthood adulthood yeah adulthood josh gad love him yeah and uh yeah so that um right now you know like things are winding down it's like november you know things are kind of starting to wind down for the year so like you know i'm just taking classes and you know getting better and working out and you know all building that 10 second car you know so things are happening there's like you know a bunch of projects that are happening right now but i really can't say much but uh like honestly like yeah i'm really i'm really excited about adulthood yeah buddy congrats well there you have it listeners of inside the audition uh this has been great uh thanks for chatting 
Uh, again, watch Tales from the Void into the Unknown on Screenbox in the States or on Amazon Prime slash Super Channel in Canada. Uh, the episode is Into the Unknown. And uh, stay tuned for more of these. Uh, we're going to do a series of them. So if you're listening to this one out of order, there's more. Um, but uh, yeah, subscribe, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things on all the platforms. This has been Inside the Audition. Final thought, Sean, I'm going to leave it to you. Advice to other actors or humans. What do you want to tell people? Treat your dreams like your main chick and everything else like your side piece. Don't let anything make decisions for the main chick, your job. You got to work. You got to work hard. But listen, if if you have those opportunities to, to progress as an actor, take them. I'm not saying don't crash out. Don't jump out the window and quit your job. I'm saying make sure you make your dream, your goal as a priority. Mike drop. Hey, hey, this is Joey Freddy Larson. I want to say thank you so much for listening to another fantastic episode of Inside the Audition. If you're still struggling with your self-tape auditions, now is the time to join Actors Audition Club. You'll get expert coaching, practical tips, and support from a community that is dedicated to helping actors succeed. Our members receive personalized guidance, insider advice that ensures every audition reflects your true talent. If you're serious about booking more roles and leveling up your audition game, Actors Audition Club is the place to be. Visit www.actorsauditionclub.com to join today and make sure that you make your next audition count. Once again, you can join at actorsauditionclub.com and we will help you shoot standout auditions in less time.